Almost all 3D artists are happy if they can use different and exciting events in their projects. Events that are difficult to do in reality. It is even possible to create special art scenes by doing this and sell them as NFT. We use Particle Systems and the TIE Flow plugin for this. So if you're also interested in getting to know this plugin, stay with us until the end of the video. Hi, welcome to MimViz. The TieFlow plugin is the best choice for creating particle systems in 3D Max. But what is a particle system? We have previously talked about the particle system and the TieFlow plugin. We were taught how to install the TieFlow plugin. So be sure to watch the video above before we continue. Well, we have a bathroom scene here. There's a bathtub in the middle of it, and its roof has a hole. Well, it has an attractive architecture. But this is not enough for me. I want an exciting event to happen in this scene, something that usually doesn't happen. So what happens if a large number of plastic ducts enter this bathtub from this hole in the roof and fill this bathtub with plastic ducts. So let's do it. The first step is to open the TieFlow plugin. To do this, we select the TieFlow from the Create tab. And now we draw it in our scene. Note that this is just an icon. Therefore, its size and position in the scene is of no importance. Now from the Modifier section, we select the Open Editor section. On the Editor page, there are operators and nodes. And we get the result we want by combining them. On the Editor page, we see all the commands and operators at the bottom of the page. In this section, there is a division of operators. If you want to change their position, right-click on the Editor page and select Operator Vertical from the Layout section. Now, the operators are located on the left side of the page. From the Layout section, you can customize the Editor window and make changes to it. But let's get started. The birth command is most useful at the beginning of working with TIEFLOW. We can bring the operators to the main page by clicking and dragging. But there is also a faster way. By clicking the tab button, we can type the names of the operators and then double click them to be added to our editor page. When we add the first operator to the page, an event is automatically created. Events can place a set of operators within themselves until they finally become a particle system. However, each event has a display part that can control the event display settings on the viewport page. But now that we've talked about the viewport, let me add this point. When you create tie flow on the top of the viewport, in place of the viewport labels, a new label is created in connection with tie flow, which allows us to access a number of tie flow features. Now, to fill this bathtub with a large number of plastic ducts, we go to the operator section and use the birth operator. But in this operator, you can see that it creates 200 particles from frame 0 to frame 100 for us. But where are these particles? If you look carefully in the coordinates 000, 
that is in the center of the coordinate, you can see the particles in color. This is the same color that is specified in the display section and can be changed. However, the location of these particles is not correct. Using the position operator, you can specify the location of the particles. We have different position operators, but I use the position icon. I set this operator by clicking and dragging under the birth operator. The priority of placing operators in events is very important. So pay attention to the order of placement of operators. But now, to use the position icon, we need an icon. It can be created in two ways. By clicking on the Create New section, it can be created. or choose Tie Flow from the Helper section in the Create tab. Now in this section we will see the Tie Flow. Now by clicking and dragging we can create a new icon and change its location. I go back to the Editor window and introduce this icon to the Position Operator. Now I can control the location of the particles. As you can see, particles are now created on the icon. But I need these particles to fall on the ground. And their shape should change to a plastic duck. To change the shape of the particles, I use the shape operator. I add the shape operator to the bottom of the position operator. And now I add the object of my choice to the shape operator from the shape list section. But you see that nothing changes. The reason is that you have to go to the display section and set the display mode to geometry. This makes the display mode of particles no longer in pixels. You can see that the duck object has replaced the pixels. But these particles have no material. To give them material, it is enough to choose the material of the duck's body and apply it to the tie flow icon. This causes all the tie flow particles to pick up our material. Now my particles have turned into a plastic duck. But if you want to change the size of the particles, activate the scale option in the shape operator. Now we can consider the bigger dimensions for the particles. We can also set variations for them so that the size of the particles changes according to the entered percentage. Now, for the ducks to fall into the bathtub, we need an attractive force. However, there are several ways to define an attractive force. The best way is to use the physics operator. What I'm looking for is a physics shape that I click and drag after the shape. Now, as you can see, our ducks are falling, but they fell on a virtual level. The parameters of that level are controllable by the physics section in the tie flow modifier. It can be deactivated or even its height can be changed. But the problem is that the ducks pass through the bathtub and do not fall into it. So we need to physically define this bathtub in the tie flow. To do this, we use the physics collision. 
Now, after the physics shape parameter, I set the physics collision parameter. Now, in the collider section, I add the bathtub object. Now the ducks hit the bathtub object. But there is still a problem. As you can see, the ducks do not fall into the bathtub. To solve this problem, we go back to the PhysX collision operator. Now in the hall type section, we select the mesh parameter. This makes the fake lines used for collision exactly match our object. Let me show you in more detail. I turn on the display hall parameter. Now, the lines you see are the boundaries that are used for particle collisions. In the previous case, we used the convex parameter. As you can see, in this case, a general boundary is considered for it. So for my object shape, I need to use the mesh parameter. Easy! At this stage, we can also use the rotation operators so that our objects rotate randomly and we get a more realistic result. But be careful to set this operator before the physics shape parameter. Now, as you can see, we got the result we wanted. And this happened with the help of the TieFlow plugin. Maybe this is the simplest project we can do with TieFlow. With the help of this plugin, we can create amazing scenes. The good news is that we will have more TieFlow tutorials in the future. So be sure to subscribe to our channel and leave your comments for us. Thank you for watching this video. Bye until the next video.